And let me remind you that there are no such a things as shortcuts. You know the meaning of a shortcut? Uh, it backfires. It doesn't work. If it works, it only works temporarily. It doesn't give you good results. At least it doesn't give you the best results. And all this is derived from commitment. If you are committed, if you understand your responsibilities, if you can identify and also understand the opportunities available to you and to the society, and the needs of society, the challenges, then you just move ahead and make your contribution. But to make effective contribution, you must build capacities. You must study. You must learn. You must acquire knowledge. You must acquire skills. If all that is achieved with proper, with proper thinking, then your contribution can reach the maximum that you can reach. And most of these things I'm talking about are not just uh, stories, it's not rumors, it's not uh, all these are things that are there. All these are things that are possible. All of these, these are things within your reach. You just have to make investment. You have to invest yourself. You have to invest your energy. Hard work. And you achieve all of these things. And because of the problems I talked about earlier on, some of which or many of which are specific to our country, we find ourselves under pressure to work even doubly hard where others as somebody put it to one of the most respected leaders of our continent said we find ourselves in a situation where others have to walk for us, we have to run. Isn't it? When some other, others, some other people have the luxury to walk and feel good and relax and, you know, depend on some of the investments they made long ago and the hard work and the sweat, you know, of long ago, for us, we are just running in search of all these things that we deserve to have, we need to have, but which we don't have. That's the truth of the matter. Isn't it? Yes, these are facts. I'm not creating anything. You've not created anything. These are the facts we confront today.
these are the real issues of our real life. That's the real life we live. If somebody tells you anything different, it's not true. So, as we sit here, young people, in order the very young leaders of today and leaders of tomorrow. We have to be thinking about this. We have to be telling ourselves the truth and only the truth. Do we also have ambitions? I think so. You cannot develop. You cannot move fast. You cannot overcome these complex problems we face today without being driven also by the ambition. The ambition to achieve, to succeed to be better every day, every week, every month, every year. Isn't it? After all, what is it that would stop us from having these ambitions? From wanting to be better and better every time? What is it that should stop us from fulfilling our dream? From aspiring? From what is it that stops us from wanting to achieve what others have achieved and have been even taken for granted. Wealth is their freedoms, prosperity and development to the point that they have to come back and uh, look after you and babysit you and show magnanimity to you and make you believe that you are living because of them. Do you want to live because of somebody else? Or because somebody else is just being generous to you? No. We have that right. And we have that capacity, if we want, at least we have that potential to transform our lives. But it all starts with the attitude, with the mindset, and what you do building on that attitude or within that attitude. You will never develop if you think you will never succeed if you think that someone else is going to come and do something that takes you there for you. Why did you see that? Tell me one example. Just one example in the whole world. Tell me that in a certain such a place, 
in such and such a country, people developed, people became free, people achieved their transformation and aspirations because there was somebody who was generous who came and delivered it to them. <laughs> Tell me one example. They right? Those who know history and other things, tell me. So, should Rwanda be the exception? And should Africa be the exception? Should we sit back and feel good about nothing? And also hope at the same time that uh, peace and freedom and development and prosperity and everything will be delivered to us? No. And there is no better age group tell you this, than you. No better group than you I should be addressing until